This is not a vacation rental. It's a nuclear power plant. Sort of the typical ways people perceive power plants. Big, bulky, sort of brutalist architecture systems. And they come with a lot of baggage. But these new technologies are fundamentally different. Meet the husband and wife engineering duo. They discovered a game-changing technology buried in a government lab in Idaho. Here we go. Wow. What they found is sparking a renaissance of nuclear energy. I see nuclear power as the only efficient way to deeply decarbonize. And so the stakes couldn't be greater. Their startup, Oklo, is setting out to build smaller, safer, and more efficient nuclear reactors. Building one's relatively easy. The fun part is thinking about how you build hundreds of thousands. <laughs> Let's make an offer. <laughs> right now, we're at a precipice of, of a true transition to sort of what I think the future of energy looks like. And with global demand for clean energy skyrocketing, the clock is ticking. But if they're successful, they could pioneer the next energy revolution. This is Stand Together Presents. Stories, ideas, and advice from changemakers tackling our biggest challenges. You got yourself a front seat to something you're not going to forget so quick. Before going any further, it's probably worth addressing the radioactive elephant in the room. Most of us hear nuclear power and think of this. Where radiation levels were five times normal. I don't want any part of it. Not to mention the radioactive waste, which has to be buried for thousands of years. But that's old nuclear. We're about to meet new nuclear. But first, what made the idea of nuclear energy so intriguing in the first place? It's the power of the atom. When you split an atom of uranium, it releases energy millions of times greater than any other source on the planet. One of the coolest stats to me is that a golf ball-sized piece of uranium metal could power a person's entire lifetime. The fact that it can produce so much energy from so little, it can do so without emitting greenhouse gases. That's not smoke, it's steam. Don't worry, I didn't know that either. And that's a big deal because the world needs a lot more clean energy. We're talking about orders of magnitude, more energy needed, electricity specifically. But there are serious questions about whether renewable sources can generate enough power to meet the growing demand on their own. While wind and solar only generate energy when the wind is blowing or the sun is shining, nuclear is producing clean power around the clock. Plus it uses fewer resources. Just one nuclear power plant can do the job of over 400 wind turbines or three million solar panels which means it's clearly lined up to be both the cheapest and the most sustainable. Altogether, it creates just this sort of, honestly, silver bullet type solution. Now, what if I told you we've already invented a new kind of nuclear reactor? One that can't melt down the way old reactors did and can actually recycle radioactive waste. Only problem is, it was shut down 30 years ago. And the technology lies buried in a government lab out in the middle of the Idaho desert. That's where Jake and Caroline are headed. So you've got this kind of legendary reactor that, like, what it did is completely and totally underappreciated and underrealized. We had the treasure map. It's just we looked and a lot of people didn't. Here we are. Yeah, this is where so much of it happened. This is the EBR2, one of the nation's first fast reactors. And one thing that makes fast reactors unique is they don't require a human operator to stay safe. This is the control panel where they operated EBR2. Were you here when they did the shirt test? I, I was, so... So it's amazing. They essentially ran the, the plant up to full power, reached over and shut off the primary pumps, and then kind of sat back like this and yeah. at, at the control panel. You heard that right. They intentionally tried to create a meltdown, and they couldn't. Here we go. Wow. And the other thing they discovered, this reactor can reuse radioactive waste as fuel, which means less waste ends up in the ground. You can get over 90% of the energy content out, which makes the reactors much more efficient, but also able to actually recycle waste. This technology, this is the treasure that Jake and Caroline found. But because of accidents like Chernobyl, public support for nuclear dried up, and the government pulled the plug. And this promising new technology was put on a shelf. But we can do things fundamentally quite a bit differently and quite a bit better. Now Jake and Caroline are dusting off this fast reactor blueprint and modernizing it to build the next generation of nuclear reactors. A couple big things that we've done in the last month, which are obviously pretty exciting. You're talking about systems that are smaller, that are simpler, that are cheaper to build, that look fundamentally different. And that's so important because that changes people's paradigm. Meet the Aurora Powerhouse, a micro reactor that kind of looks like a European ski lodge but it can power up to 15,000 homes for over a decade without refueling. And it can run on recycled nuclear waste. 
Because it uses that same fast reactor technology, it can run safely without a human operator, which means you can build them just about anywhere. You can really deploy this on a global scale and help provide abundant, clean, affordable power on a global basis that really nothing else can do. Jake and Caroline plan on building their first reactor by 2025, out in the desert where this all started. And so we'll, we're going to be building it basically right back there behind us. But they have an uphill battle trying to convince regulators to do things differently this time around. To give you an idea of how hard it is to build nuclear reactors in the U.S., the Nuclear Regulatory Commission was established way back in 1975, and not a single new power plant that applied under the NRC has ever started operation. Oklahoma's first application was recently denied, but they continue to work with regulators in hopes of a landmark approval, one that would pave the way to bring new nuclear into existence. You get your first one out there, but what that does is it just it opens the door right, for everything that's next. The question is, should fears of our nuclear past stand in the way of innovative solutions? If Oklo succeeds, they believe we could get a future where energy is not only clean, but far more abundant. Enough energy to power a planet of 10 billion people for over 10 billion years. And that could open the door to all kinds of possibilities.